One thing that helps a lot of people keep track of which carbons these substituents are supposed to go on when they flip the ring is to number their carbons, okay? So for example, this compound has six carbons in the ring. So I wanna number each of these carbons from one to six. It doesn't matter where I start from just as long as I stay consistent, okay? So hey, arbitrarily, I'm just gonna label this carbon right here, carbon number one, and I'm gonna go clockwise around this ring. So I'm gonna label this one, two, three, four, five, and six. So what this numbering is telling me is that I have a substituent on carbon one, carbon two, and carbon four. So when I flip this chair over, there better be substituents on carbons one, two, and four, okay? So, hey, just draw out a blank chair for me. Forget this for right now, just draw out a blank chair for me. Like that. And we're gonna label the carbons of this blank flipped chair from one through six. And it doesn't matter how you label them. You can start from any carbon on this ring. You just have to make sure that when you put the substituents on, they are on the appropriate carbons, okay? So, hey, I'm just gonna bust the eeny, meeny, miny, mo here to show you that it doesn't matter, okay? So, hey, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Okay, so let's start from this carbon right here, and let's make this carbon, carbon number one, okay? For this guy, I chose to go clockwise around this ring. I'm just gonna go counterclockwise on this. It doesn't matter. I'm just doing this to show you that, hey, it doesn't matter how you number this thing, okay? So hey, let's make this carbon one. Let's make this two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so when I add the substituents to this ring, I wanna make sure that, hey, the CH3 that was on carbon number one over here is still gonna be on carbon number one over here. And hey, this OH that was on carbon number two here is still gonna be on carbon number two here. And lastly, this CH3 that was on carbon number four will still be on carbon number four here, okay? So let me go ahead and fill that in for you guys. So this CH3 that was on carbon number one here will be here, and it will change from axial to equatorial. So it'll go like that. This OH that was on carbon number two here will go on this carbon number two here. This before was axial, it's now going to change to equatorial, so it's gonna look like that. And lastly, this CH3 that was on carbon number four here will still be on carbon number four here, except it's gonna change from equatorial to axial. So it's gonna point straight up like this, like that. And hey, you guys, I know the first time you see something like this, it's pretty overwhelming. But don't worry, because after you practice this a couple times, it'll be no problem for you, all right? So anyways, the point of this example was to show you how to draw the most stable conformation of a ring. And we saw that the original conformation had two axials and one equatorial substituent. We've now flipped this chair and changed all the axial substituents to equatorial and all the equatorial substituents to axial, okay? So, hey, if we count them up, we'll see that we now have one, two equatorials and one axial substituent. And it doesn't matter which of these flipped chair conformations you choose, they're both gonna have one, two equatorial, one axial, two equatorial, and one axial, okay? These are both flipped versions of this original conformation. They're both correct, okay? So which one of these conformations is more stable? This one on the left with two axials and one equatorial substituent, or this one on the right with two equatorial substituents and one axial? The one on the right, right? because most substituents are equatorial. So we would draw this equilibrium arrow more towards the right to show that, hey, this conformation is favored over this conformation, okay? So, hey, let me make this equilibrium arrow going more toward the right than to the left because this conformation is favored over this one because this is more stable because more substituents are equatorial in this conformation than this conformation, cool? So in answer to our question, is this the most stable conformation for this chair? If not, draw the most stable. We looked at this original conformation, we flipped it over, and we saw that no, this conformation was not the most stable. This was because it had more equatorial substituents, all right? So cool, you guys. This was an example of how you'd use 
this first rule. But let's see an example of when you'd want the biggest substituents to be equatorial. Okay, so if I drew a ring up here like this and put an OH here axial and a CH3 here equatorial, and I asked you, is this the most stable conformation for this chair? If not, draw the most stable. Then hey, you would tell me, all right, OH is a larger substituent than CH3 in terms of its atomic radius. And OH right now is axial and CH3 is equatorial. So no, this isn't the most stable conformation for this chair because the largest substituent, OH here, should be equatorial instead of this smaller CH3. So we're going to remedy this situation simply by doing a chair flip. And this will change all the axials to equatorial and all the equatorials to axial. So let's go ahead and draw our equilibrium arrow in here. Flip our chair over. So now it looks like this. And go ahead and change all the axials to equatorial and all the equatorials to axial, okay? So, hey, once again, it doesn't matter how you put these substituents on this carbon ring as long as they're on the appropriate carbons, okay? So, hey, I'm just going to stick this OH onto this carbon and he's going to change from axial to equatorial. And this CH3 I'm going to put on this carbon, one carbon away from this OH, okay? So, hey, this CH3 was equatorial, he's now going to change to axial. Look like that. And cool, we've now made this OH change from axial to equatorial, and we've now flipped this CH3 that was equatorial to axial. The biggest substituent in terms of its atomic radius, the OH, is now equatorial, and this is now in the most stable conformation. So we would draw this equilibrium arrow more towards the right to show that, hey, this conformation is favored. So make this equilibrium arrow go more towards the right to show that this conformation is the favored chair. And just to give you an insight into how I like to mentally flip this chair over, what I like to do is just imagine that I'm flipping this thing completely over so that this is sort of a mirror image of this, okay? So, hey, this bond would be this bond, this bond would be this bond, this bond would be this bond, and see how it's kind of like flipping this thing directly over so it's its mirror image, sort of, you guys? Okay, well, you can do it however you want, but this is just how I like to imagine it, okay? Okay, so now that you understand these rules and how to apply them, let me show you one more example because your professor can go one step further and ask you something a little bit more complicated, all right?